What's up Hero Front fam, Josh White here. Good morning, or at least it's morning for me. Uh, I got my coffee here with my resiliency cup. Man, just, just loving life out here. And I have a really special Summit Edition podcast coming at you uh, where I just met up with Riley, AKA Rye Roast, where we had an incredible discussion. And I just wanna thank Riley personally for making the trip all the way out to Dallas to sit down and have this episode with us on her own dime. Um, Very special of her to do that. Neo. I don't know if you can hear my dog. He's, he's old. He's, he just coughs all morning. It's you. All right. Go get some water. So in this discussion, we talk about her dedicated father who served as a police officer Riley shares her journey of overcoming physical and mental challenges proving that unwavering commitment and determination are at the heart of the proudest Air Force moments now you probably know Riley from TikTok and Instagram and so of course we go into that Um, her path to social media success is a fascinating one intricately intertwined with past relationships and a mental health journey Through content creation, including the famous Pants, more on that later, Riley discovered a unique voice and a supportive community showcasing the therapeutic power of social media. Now, she shares her story to help others, and we delve into her battle with PTSD and the long road to her diagnosis. Her journey transforms personal trauma into a means of support for others, underscoring the importance of embracing bravery and strength in adversity and advocating for mental health. Her unwavering commitment to supporting others, especially those in need of someone to talk to, demonstrates the power of compassion and empathy that she has created in her online presence. She is truly a beacon of hope and a source of strength for many. And so I do want to also put a trigger warning in here. Riley goes into some really tough topics on uh, an abusive relationship she was caught up in and how she escaped it. And I want to thank her for being vulnerable and sharing this valuable insight and her powerful story. But for anyone who might be triggered by such a topic, I just want to give you that heads up. If you listen all the way to the end of this episode, um, I will give a little bit of my opinion on Rye Roast and Riley. But you got to wait to the end to hear it. All right, y'all. Let's get after it. What's up, everyone? Josh White here. We're coming to you live from the summit. Now, this is an epic event. We're in Dallas. It has just been such a fun time here. Everyone's TDY here from all over the world. Uh, And we've just been having such a blast here. And we are joined none other than Rye Roast, who has a tremendous Air Force following. And now that we are including uh, Air Force influencers, she was invited to participate. So I want to thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Absolutely. And if anyone watches um, me interview people, I always start with three random questions. Now, we did discuss topics, but we did not discuss the random questions. We did not, no. So we're going to do that now. So, question number one Who is your favorite TikToker? Who is my favorite TikToker? Oh. Oh my gosh. Did I stump you on question one? You did. How? I I have a lot of content, like creators that I really, really like, like my fellow mill talkers, my really good friend, Veronica Whiplash Actual. Great. She's in the Marines. She's Sergeant in the Marine Corps. She's fantastic. I like the most random videos on TikTok. Last night I was on a spiral of home renovations. On home renov... Okay. That is random. That is random. So you can't pick one favorite? I don't think so. No? I can't. What if you had to? If I had to? Mm, probably Veronica's. Veronica? Yeah, probably. What's hers called? Whiplash Actual. Nice. Is that on TikTok? She is, yeah. Okay. And what's your name on TikTok? Uh, Rye Roast. And how many followers do you have? Um, I have about 550,000-ish. 550,000-ish. Yeah, something like that. That's tremendous. Like, I thought I was good at, like, 10,000, and that's, like, nothing compared to where you, how you're rolling. So, hey, that's amazing. Okay, so question number two, why 
did you join the Air Force? Um, I don't know. I don't know how I ended up here. I just kind of ended up here. When I was in high school, um, I was 17 when I was a senior, and my dad kind of gave me two options. He said that you can either go to the community college for two years, um, you can pay for it, pay rent at home, keep working full time, or you can join the military. So at the time, I thought the entire military was the army. So I walked into the recruiter's office, um, saw a tall guy in the back in his blues, and I said, all right, that looks cool. So. Now I've adapted to, I knew I wanted to do something bigger than myself and I wanted to help people. So I became a medic in the Air Force. And I'm a medic as well. Shout out to all the medics in the Air Force. There you go. Right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. So uh, you mentioned your dad in that. I did. You're very close with him, right? I am, yeah. Okay. Why don't you expand on that a little bit? Is he like your, like your, your biggest mentor in your life? Would you say right now? Yeah. My dad raised me as a single father. So it's not as common that you see single fathers, um, mm -hmm. raising daughters. So my dad raised me as a single father. Um, he was a police officer. He's retired now. Um, super great. Fantastic. My biggest rock, tough love mentor. He's great. He's fantastic. Dad, if you're watching this, Hey, and, and, you know, I was in the same situation. Yeah. Like, I had a, a single dad raise me as well. Oh, so, yeah. you know, I can relate with you there. And um, so shout out to Riley's dad. What's his name? Mike. Mike. Shout out to Mike for raising such an outstanding airman medic in today's Air Force. Thank you so much. And what's your grandma's name? Carol. Grandma Carol, Carol. if you're watching, Grandma Carol, thank you so much for tuning in. You have a, a fantastic granddaughter. Okay, we're rolling into question number three. So I noticed you posted a picture the other day where you looked a lot different than you do now. Do you know what I'm talking about? You said you used to be a lot like... Bigger? Yes. Yes. So why'd you post that picture? First of all, yeah. that shocked me. Cause like when I see you now, mm -hmm. I just imagine this is how you've always looked. Yeah. So when, I, honest to God, like I was like, is this a real picture? Like, is this real? So can you run me through um, that time of your life and why did you post that picture? Um, I guess it's kind of like an ugly duckling story. Mm -hmm. um, kind of there, I was big when I was around maybe 15. I was almost 200 pounds. Um, I didn't have good mental health. I wasn't really taking care of myself. I was almost 200 pounds, like I just said, and, you know, made a little bit of a lifestyle change, and here I'm at. So it was just kind of something that just happened. It was just something that changed. I think once I, you know, started, like, living with my dad full time, like, stuff really started changing around and switching up. So where were you at before you were living with him full time? My mother. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, you've passed the three questions, and this is the bonus question that I always ask everyone. Okay. But what is your proudest Air Force moment? My proudest Air Force moment? Um, back in February, I was driving to work, super busy highway. I was in the left-hand lane and I was in full uniform, right? Slammed on the brakes, cars in front of me slammed on their brakes. I stopped, obviously, because I wasn't gonna crash. I had to like veer off on the side. The cars in front of me pulled off. I saw a white Tesla like zoom around really quick and then another car like stopped. And then I saw a Navy corpsman run out of her car. I didn't know what was happening because I couldn't see. And then that's when I saw a car was flipped over on its back, just oh, wow. no other cars involved. I couldn't let a Navy corpsman show me up. So I had to get out and help out. Um, we ended up pulling her out of the vehicle, um, like physically pulling her out of the vehicle. Wow. And I still made it to work on time. Wow, you need to do it all. Apparently. My God. That was a busy morning. That sounds like a busy morning. You yeah. were, that, I mean, as a medic, you know, when you're, you always wonder what, how you're going to react yeah. in like wild situations. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you know, I was kind of in a, a situation recently where I needed to act. Um, and it, it really surprised me, um, you know, how I was able to get through that. Yeah. Afterwards I was a mess. Oh yeah. But it's like that adrenaline dump is like terrible. <laughs> right. But like just going through it with all the training, you know, 
you just kind of go into that autopilot mode and you're able to get through it you, you do, know yeah so it, it really made me appreciate like medic x t triple c e meds all that yeah definitely because it definitely worked in in the situation that i was in it sounds like it worked for you too yeah no that's awesome thank you for sharing that all right y'all so here's our topics with riley today the topics are social media obviously um relationship past relationships and how that ties to mental health and then lastly um how you're an instructor you're in the air force and how your past helps you be a better instructor so we're going to start with the first one social media now you have 550,000 followers which is tremendous um and you know i'm just kind of curious just in general how did you get to that point was it w did you hit the ground running was it a struggle was it your goal so i was hoping you can kind of run us through your social media journey and how you got to where you're at today it happened completely randomly um super random i had posted a video um it was a trending sound back in like 2020 it was a Nicki minaj sound and the caption was so you think that you're a good medic and i said something about getting giving like acetaminophen and like a pair of new socks or something and that video blew up and i was like oh okay and i had always made the joke to my friends like oh i'm gonna be TikTok famous like everyone says that um and that that did me in i kind of hit the ground running from there i started talking about being a woman in the military, being a medic in the military, being an, just an airman in general, um, a whole bunch of stuff came out from that. And my following slowly started growing. And then I start, started talking about the pants. Yes, I've seen a lot of your pants videos. So like- The pants. <laughs> dudes are always bashing on the way like on online they're bashing how women in the military wear their pants i saw that one video that you responded to where he like pulled them way up and he's like yeah. so why is that such a big deal like what is going on i wear my pants correctly by the way pants are supposed to sit above the hip bone that's where they're supposed to sit anatomically men and women are different i think because I'm s small, like I'm a smaller person. My pants appear as if they're like really, really high on my body. So anytime I don't have my blouse on, it's like wild to people. They think that my pants are like in my armpits, like they're super duper high. A lot of people didn't know that the female pants have elastics in the sides mm. to like accommodate for our hips, like hip to waist ratio. Um, and the pants, just every single time I post about the pants. It blows up. It blows up every single time. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I think you need to make your own like brand of pants. Apparently, my I, God. I, at this rate, I probably should. Yeah, you you post a video on pants, it just it goes freaking viral. Yeah. And I've seen it a bunch of them, and I, and every time I'm like, why is this a thing? This is I so weird. Don't get it either. I really don't understand. <laughs> I have no idea. But you keep bringing up the pants. You're giving the people what they want. You want to discuss yeah. these pants and how they fit. Yeah, yeah, but it's the pants. I post about different stuff. My content has kind of changed within the last year. I focus a lot about mental health, uh, my hair. I always give different ways to wear your hair in uniform because that AFI changed and we're allowed to do all different kinds of stuff now. So yeah, but it always goes back to the pants. So for someone that, you know, what, who is your ideal subscriber? Like when you're making your content, who are you trying to reach? Who are you hoping subscribes to you and follows you what kind of person it kind of varies i never i guess i don't really think about who is following me but a lot of my content is really targeted towards like those junior enlisted people it's tor t like mostly targeted towards our junior enlisted people and then i think our ncos mostly just because i feel as if some of my views and some of my aspects are a little bit different than other ncos that i've worked with and just being able to put that out to, for people to see is it's good if they're able to see it absolutely and you know i kind of think social media like podcasting and, and all that is is kind of a bit therapeutic too yeah there's like an art form to it you're expressing yourself do you get anything out of it i i don't think it hits me until it, i see it in person I don't think anything has affected me until I see the impact that I make in person. I, I get the comments, I get the likes, I get the followers, but it's when someone approaches me or when I get that DM saying, 
hey, like Riley, like you did this, like you're you're doing good stuff out there. I think that's when it like actually hits me and I get that like that warm fuzzy feeling that what I'm doing is making a difference. Right. Yeah, they're the people that have like a an issue or something negative to say, they're always going to say it, right? Yeah. But like if someone took something positive from that, they don't always share it or they'll just DM you. Yeah. And I get that a, a, a lot too on social media. There's people I, I've stayed in touch with for years, you know, just going back and forth through, and no one even knows we're, you know, we're talking to each other, but this person trusted me enough to kind of share some things. And it really does uh, open the door to like helping people. It's just not so apparent when yeah. things like pants are freak making people freak out. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of um, behind the scenes when it comes to social media and being that that like influencer or, like content creator i personally don't call myself an influencer i don't call myself a content creator other people do but i personally don't what do you call yourself riley <laughs> <laughs> good point okay yeah. yeah no that makes sense actually yeah. okay um yeah i mean some of those words kind of get or sound a bit like cringe you know what i mean so i don't blame you for that at all i'm yeah. 38 so I'll, I'll use the word you yeah. know i'm a dad why not yeah um <laughs> so out of all your videos uh riley is there any particular video that you thought had a tremendous positive impact and you were getting dms and, and it really did help people to hear that story or video i had a little series going with mental health and about warning signs for suicide. I had a series going about that and the impact that that one made uh, was tremendous. Really? What kind of messages were you getting? It was um, messages from people saying that they had seen some stuff in their friends and they were able to talk to their friends about it and really know what was going on or saying that they wish that more people knew about the warning signs or stuff because we get, we get those classes we get the suicide prevention we we get all of these classes that are supposed to provide us with the resources but again until you're in the situation you really don't know what you're doing or what you're looking for or what you're supposed to be looking for right no that's that's awesome um all right riley so last question on the social media Let's say you stick with this for another 10 years. What do, you, what do you hope that looks like? Making an impact. Making an impact bigger than what I've done already. I want to be able to travel and talk to people and share my story and do all kinds of cool stuff. Absolutely. You're a medic. Of course you're going to do cool stuff. Of course. Um, okay, so, you know, speaking of your story... You talk a lot about your past relationship, right? And you're very transparent about that. And I applaud you for that because there's a lot of people that are going through it right now. Um, they don't have a lot of answers and they're afraid to speak up. Uh, and you've kind of been through that process. Uh, and that really ties into your mental health awareness and how you, how you approach that. So I was kind of hoping if you were okay with it to kind of run us through that past relationship trauma and, and where you're at today with it. Yeah, um, I was in a domestic abusive relationship. Um, I was, it's, it was my first relationship. I didn't know what was normal. I didn't know what was expected out of that relationship. Um, it was a fellow airman at the time, um, and it wasn't well. It wasn't great. Um, there was kind of a final straw that happened, and I ended up uh, calling the police and that kick-started the court-martial process. So the court-martial process, everything happened. Um, I called August 21st of 2021, and I did not sit on the court-martial process until this past March. Oh, wow, so that's really recent. It was very recent. I waited 580 days. Holy cow, how, how are you feeling now that it's all starting to get behind you? It's, it kind of felt as if like that that chapter like the court martial like actually being there at the court martial like actually seeing him was kind of it felt as if it was like the last chapter that i really needed to be able to move on but i feel like there's still stuff that is able to linger with that right yeah like a ptsd yeah definitely i have diagnosed ptsd from that right. which 
I feel like it's becoming more apparent now that PTSD, because automatically when you hear PTSD, what do you think of? Deployments. War. You think right. of war. And a lot of people don't realize that you can get that from different stuff. You can get that from childhood drama. You can get that from an abusive relationship in my stance. It, it affects you, and it's going to affect me for a long time. So have you ever been able to use that really terrible experience you went through uh, in, in some sort of positive way for helping others? Have you ever used that story in that way? I did, actually, just recently. Um, I had met a very young airman who is, is going through something very similar to me. Um, I have had countless people message me telling me that that they finally reported, which is wild that it took something like seeing me being able to share the story to do that. Um, I've helped other people. I've offered to go to people's court martial to be their support person. I get to see that and I get to see what it's doing. Wow. So you're there for people like on a whole nother level now, which is super brave of you because I mean, I could imagine it's hard to like revisit that, relive that, even through someone else's experience. But yet I feel like to you, it seems to be worth going through that, even for your own sanity, if it's going to help that person get through it. Yeah, I firmly, I firmly believe that everything happens for a reason. I think that everything happens for a reason and whoever put me on this path and is the way that things are playing out, I was meant to be there, to be able to go through what I went through, to be able to help other people. Definitely. And, and going back to when you were kind of, you know, when, when you're in the thick of a situation, like it's hard to think clearly. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. Like you said, you don't know what's normal. Mm -hmm. and what, is this a normal relationship? You know, you have all these questions. Um, if you were to give that past Riley a message from the Riley you are now, what would you tell her? You're stronger than you know. Isn't that a Winnie the Pooh quote? You're stronger than you know, braver than you think? Probably. Winnie the Pooh's got some fire quotes. He does. He does. I, I'm shocked by how amazing these quotes are. Yeah. But, no, really, like, I think that everyone is brave to a certain degree, but braveness comes out at different times, and strength also shows in different ways, so... Okay, yeah. speaking of strength, what, what, what would you say was the first... Because... You know, there's a mindset of just dealing with it, of accepting it, and then there's the mindset of, no, I'm, I'm not standing for this anymore. Yeah. What did that first step look like for you? For being able to actually, like, get to the point where I was done. Mm -hmm. um, I've never shared this before. I'm going to share it besides my close friends and family. Um, the person was out of town. We had lived together. Um, they were away, probably about four or five hours away. And they had said something about uh, what I was wearing. And it was very odd that that happened and it continued to happen. I had gone out on the back porch and I called my best friend and I said, like, there's no way, like, something, something odd is happening. He knows what I'm doing. He knows what I'm wearing. The, like, this is serious. So I go back into the bedroom and I start looking around the bedroom and I had these tall, tall windows and I started moving the curtains and, you know, I'm all around the bedroom and I had picked up a stuffed animal that was next to the TV and I'm still on FaceTime with my friend and I like zoomed in on the eye and I was like, ooh, like nanny cam, like joking with her and I threw it on the bed and then I went to pick up the next stuffed animal and when I went to pick it up, it snagged on the wall and that's when I realized that there was a live streaming camera that had been watching me holy cow what i later ended up finding out for about a month and a half so what you thought was like impossible you're even joking about it yeah come to find out that's actually happening there is a camera a nanny cam in your room yeah it was surreal um i don't it was very kind of everything happened very very close together um, I had, I had it in my hand, I had my phone in the other hand, and, um, I was crying, and my friend was 
yelling at me to unplug the camera, unplug the camera, and I ended up unplugging the camera. And the moment that I unplugged the camera, I got a text message that said, oh, look, you caught on Bravo. And would you say that was the moment you started saying this, I'm done with this, this is over? Yeah. And you started, you, it kind of flipped the switch in your head. The, the flip, the flip was switched. The switch was flipped. There we go. The switch was flipped. Okay. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think that the real strength really came out though until a couple, couple weeks later. Why is that? Um, I, I had called, I had called the police and then I called my supervisor. I called my flight chief. I called the first sergeant. Like I called everyone that I could think of to be like, Hey, this is what's going on. Like the police are at my house right now. And it was a couple weeks later where I was questioned, um, do you really want to report this? You're going to ruin a stellar young airman's career. And, and that, was, that probably made you feel terrible, you know, cause now it's, it's saying that like, it's your fault. You have a choice, but yeah. really it was his choice, not yours. Yeah. And respectfully, I, I told this person, I said, respectfully, everything that is going to happen was caused by them. So I didn't do any of these actions. These actions were caused by his own, his own doing. So right. I feel like that was when everything kind of like clicked. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, so... You're, you're obviously a, a, an advocate for mental health mm -hmm. after going, I, I would assume going through that, you know, being at the lowest lows mm -hmm. um, and, and then kind of getting, navigating through that to where you are now. Has that changed how you view mental health? Absolutely. hundred percent. I had told one person about everything that I was going through while I was in the relationship. After the relationship, um, I very much bottled everything up. I didn't want other people to know. I didn't need other people to know. I, I had things handled and it was under control and it was under my control. And it definitely made me realize that at the end of the day, you really don't know what anyone is going through. You have no idea what the person sitting across from you is going through. Everyone has stuff. Everyone has situations that they're going through or stuff that they're dealing with. And you really don't know. So. Right. So it's kind of, it, you, you sound like you've become really empathetic um, type of person, which is, is, is we need that more <laughs> today. You know, I see a lot of the opposite. So to, to hear that, you know, you have those views and that empathetic approach, um, I think is going to make you a great supervisor. Um, and you're in an instructor position, right? So when you're in an instructor position, you know, for those who aren't in the military, like, what, what does that mean? What does that life, that job look like? Yeah, so I get brand new airmen. I get these brand new airmen who have just left basic training, and it's my job to teach them everything that's in my brain. It's kind of like passing the baton. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Like, basic training is to shape them for the Air Force, get them in this headspace where they're, you know, a team, a family, uh, how to work together, how to see each other as airmen. So it's like this whole, you know, shift of how they perceive themselves and the world. And then when it's, and then that's handed off to you. And, and so you're getting them in this really vulnerable state, I would assume, right? I would say so. They're very, I can't think of the right word, but the word that came to my mind is moldable. So this is their first impression that they're going to get. Basic training, everyone gets the same, right? The MTIs are super scary and they run around and they're yelling at everybody. But this is their first time genuinely interacting with the Air Force. So it kind of sets the tone and I feel like it sets the pace to how things are gonna go. So how long have you been doing that? I've been here for about a year now. Okay, so you're doing an instructor duty for a year. What have you learned about the airmen joining that you didn't know before you had this job? Ooh. They did a trial run where they didn't do Beast Week anymore. Not Beast Week, Zero Week, sorry. Really? Yeah. Did you notice any differences? I did. Did they ask for your feedback? 
Um, so the class was about 50-50. It was about 50-50 for people who did zero week and people who didn't do zero week. Um, and it was just, there was a apparent difference into how it was. So in your opinion, do you recommend Beast Week or not? Zero week, yes. Or zero week, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I said Beast Week, yes, yes. You recommend zero week? Yeah, I think it sets, it sets the tone. That it first sets, impression, yeah. I'm telling you, I, so I was in Honor Guard and I'd get, and why I loved that was because I would get a new group of 30 people, of 30 airmen every six yeah. months. So like anything, I could try different approaches and anything I thought I screwed up on, mm -hmm. I could then tweak it and change it with oh, this yeah. new class, mm -hmm. you know, and that that taught me so much. Yeah. Um, and the one thing that was really, really obvious was if you if you start up here, they can earn coming down to here. Mm -hmm. Right. They can earn that. But if you start at the bottom with not, you know, very lackadaisical, not a lot of standards to then get them up here when you need them to be, they're not going to do it. Yeah, so this is actually funny we're talking about this because I just had a very in-depth conversation because this is my leadership style where I'll come in. Obviously, I don't come in screaming and yelling. Like that's not my job. But I come in, you know, I come in up here to go down here just so that I don't want to go back up here, but it's, you know, we can go back if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> What does that look like when you have to go back to that? Is that just you like getting loud? Yeah, yeah. I there's a funny story. Um, the students had been leaving early, like a couple minutes early, and of course it was my class. It was my class that was leaving early, and we were walking the halls, and I heard yelling, and I was rounding the corner, and I was like, "If this is my class, like it was my class." And my major was standing in the doorway and she was talking to an airman and the airman looked at the major and said, yes, sergeant. And I, my eye like started like twitching. Mm. I was like, no. Mm. So we handled that. You handled that. We handled that. I like that. I like that, that terminology. It's vague, um, but it's enough. I get it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously you're on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So are... 100% of your students, let's be real. Yes. Um, and you've had this traumatic experience that you have gotten through and you're, and you're stronger now for it. How do you use either one of those um, with your approach to these students? I, so obviously like I'm a 4 and that I'm a 4 and to the core, like that is my job. Like my job is to put everything in my brain into your brain and hopefully you're a better medic than me at the end of the day. That is my ultimate goal. But I don't want to just put out good medics. I want to put out like well-rounded airmen. So my job goes well beyond me just teaching. It goes so much beyond that. I make a very big effort to show my airmen what a BTZ board is, what a board's going to look like. Here's your EPR, here's my EPRs, now EPVs, here's how they're written. Um, I show them the Air Force docket, I show them all of these things because I want to put out good, well-rounded airmen. That's no, the ultimate goal. Yeah, that's amazing. Because, like, there, there's some people who go, like, years without even knowing certain things that are obvious yeah. to everyone else. Like, they might have just missed that lesson. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you know, it, it's happened to me where I was in for five, six years, and then I didn't know how to do something. Mm -hmm. Everyone else did, and I just felt like, you know, I'm trying to hide that. My pride's hurt a little bit. Um, and that's a painful thing to go through with your peers. So for you to kind of go that extra mile... Um, it sounds like you're telling them the things that you may not have heard right out the gate and you kind of yeah. collectively gathered those things and deliver it to them before they're, you set them out in the world. Yeah, I try and teach them what I wish I knew at their, their time. And I didn't go through tech school that long ago. I was telling someone earlier, I don't remember who it was, but I'll be five years in the military in November. Um, that'll be my five year mark. My tech school photo is still hanging up on the walls and it's always like, where's Waldo when they're trying to find me on the walls and they end up finding it. Um, so I'm able, I'm able to connect with them and be like, hey, like I 
did the same exact thing that you did. Like this was the same exact classroom. I sat in the same exact seat. I get it, it's boring. We all got the sleepy eyes, but. It's important. I do it, yeah. Yeah, four ends, y'all are beasts. I, I got to go to Israel as a warrior medic, not even public health. Um, I was assigned with a four N and a doctor and they were putting me and this bio guy through drills and it was like intense. Yeah. And it, it got real when uh, we call her, I'm not gonna, she doesn't like to be given any shout outs cause she's so humble. So I won't say her name, but she turned the lights off in our building. It was like, now y'all are gonna do it in the dark. And we were like, what the? There you go. I mean, we knew that bag, that like medic bag mm -hmm. inside and out. And then after that experience, I just had such a tremendous respect for your career field and the things that y'all do. IDMTs, four ends, like y'all yeah. are just like so talented. It's just unreal. So I, I totally understand, you know, your, your career field and that medic mindset that y'all have. Y'all are a different breed. It's a good job. It's a great job. It's the best job. Absolutely. So, with all your students and all your classes, was there any particular student or class that you were most proud of? Probably this last class, this last class that I just had graduate. Really? Yeah. What, what made that one different? I think that just collectively as a whole, they were different. I didn't have any TDY students, so the tone is a little bit different when there's a TDY student. Um, whether it's um, whether it's a senior airman or like a sergeant, they're there, they kind of have that Air Force experience, like they kind of set the tone for the class, but I didn't have that. So I had 34 brand new airmen right out of tech school or basic and the age range was completely different. I had 17 to 37 year olds in that classroom. Holy cow. Yeah. I think the cutoff's like 38. 37 and 364 days. Yeah. You're right. That is it, actually. There you go. Yeah, that is it. Wow. Okay. Dang. So you had just a whole wide variety of folks, different ages, different reasons why they joined. Yeah. They all got a story at that point, mm -hmm. right? Um, so what, what, was, uh, what was unique about them other than their age range and the lack of, you know, mentors in the classroom other than you? I think being able to hear their stories and seeing where they're at now. I had um, a 34-year-old mother with four kids. I had an 18-year-old whose family were immigrants and he was joining the military. I had, I had an RN in my class who was coming in enlisted as an A1C with an RN, BSN. Wow. Um, I had just absolute complete different ends of the spectrum, personality, education. I had peoples with master's degrees. I've had doctors in my classes. No way. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Holy cow. That, that, is, that is super cool. Okay, Riley, so we're coming to an end here. We've hit all of our topics. The last thing I wanna ask you about is, of course I wanna know how you feel about the summit, right? I mean, that's where we're at. We're at the summit. Is this the first time you've been to? This is, yeah. Okay. I was hoping to get your thoughts on like the vibe that you've noticed. Um, you know, just your overall thoughts on the summit and your experience thus far. It's been great. I've met a lot of cool people. Everyone is super friendly. I've had a bunch of people come up and say hi and that they follow me on stuff, which is so surreal to be able to like see these people because I just see like the comments and it's just it's another comment but then like actually meeting these people um, but the summit has been great so far a lot of cool people a lot of really cool stories it's been great that's awesome and so Riley I just want to thank you so much you know on behalf of the summit team here uh, for you to you came here on your own dime yes right mm -hmm. you came here on your own dime um, and that just speaks volumes about you know your commitment um, and without you doing that, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you right now. So I want to thank you for that, but also that, you know, you've taken this traumatic experience and you've made it a learning experience for yourself and for others. And you're there for people in a way that most people can't f fulfill, but you can. And it's, and it's become your purpose. And, you know, you kind of, I, I see that dedication, you know, when you bring it up, like I can feel it. 
um, that that's your purpose. And I just want to thank you for, for being that hero, that advocate for so many people that feel like they have no one. So I just, all, all the TikTok aside, you know, I wanted to thank Riley for, for being you and for just being such an outstanding person. So thank you for your time and thank you for being you. Any final words for the audience? Thank you for the invite personally. Um, this has been great. If you're watching, thank you. Dad, hi. Grandma Carol, hi. <laughs> Hopefully they found it. I hope they did. Yeah, they might they still be searching or something, Googling Probably. it. I don't know. I hope Probably. I hope y'all found it. All right, y'all. So. Well, this was Riley. How do we find you on social media? You can find me at Rye Roast and Rye.Roast on Instagram. Awesome. And you won't be disappointed. She's super creative, super funny, super educational. Just you have such amazing content so you will not be disappointed definitely check out rye roast all right y'all we're out you made it all the way to the end of the episode and i want to thank you for that that's that's amazing you're an amazing person right now just take that to heart um and as promised i'm going to share a little bit about riley whose name is rye roast online um you know i've never met such a, a young airman who has the wisdom the, the sense of humor and the grit and the determination that Riley has. I mean, she's, she's pretty young and pretty new to the Air Force still. And for someone to be as mature as her is, is uncommon. But Riley is just a, a special person who has a tremendous impact on so many airmen. I would argue that she's one of the best recruiters that we have, knowingly or unknowingly. Um, and for her to use her platform to help others and be there for people the way she does. I think it makes her a very special person, a very uncommon individual. And I'm so thankful to have her as a fellow airman and as a friend in my life. So thank you, Riley. Thank you for coming on and meeting us out in Dallas. We really appreciate you. Hopefully we can have a part two someday. All right, y'all have a blessed day and get after it.